This video will discuss some properties of Hermitian matrices and show why they are really useful for expressing operators that are that correspond to physical observable or some measurable physical properties of the system. Okay, so we've defined a Hermitian matrix in previous videos in this chapter as a matrix where the adjoint is equal to the matrix. And the adjoint of a matrix is where you take the transpose and then you take the complex conjugate of all of your elements. So anywhere where I have a matrix diagonal, I flip which side of the diagonal my elements are on and then take the complex conjugate of all of my elements. So two properties that we're going to show in this video for Hermitian matrices is that number one, all of the eigenvalues are real. And number two, all of the eigenvectors are orthogonal. So starting with property number one, we have the definition of, of being an eigenvector and an eigenvalue. We have O, matrix O acting on uh, vector alpha equals a constant omega times the same vector alpha. So this is the definition of an eigenvalue situation. We have the vector alpha is an eigenvector of matrix O and the eigenvalue of that eigenvector is omega alpha. All right, so we can take the complex conjugate of both of these sides here. So if we take the, or we can, sorry, we can take the adjoint of both of these sides here. So the adjoint of this will give us the following kind of expression. We have alpha dagger times O, or alpha dagger times O dagger equals omega alpha star times alpha dagger. So we have the here the adjoint of alpha. That makes this a row vector. The adjoint of O, which is still just equal to O. We have uh, the adjoint of our eigenvalue is just its complex conjugate because that's a scalar. And we have the, once again, our row vector for our eigenvector for its adjoint. Okay, so we can take some steps forward here. So we're going to multiply on the left by rho vector alpha dagger on both sides here. So here we get alpha dagger O alpha. On the left, omega is just a scalar constant. So we can factor that out once we multiply by alpha dagger. So we get omega alpha, alpha dagger alpha. All right, and on the right here, we can... Uh, similar, we can multiply on the right by alpha. So we have alpha dagger O alpha equals omega star alpha dagger alpha. So we have right multiplied by the column vector alpha in both cases. All right, so what we see here is we have alpha dagger O alpha, alpha dagger O alpha. So the, these two are the same. So these two equations on the right must be equal to one another. So we have omega alpha, alpha dagger alpha equals, I believe we should have a star here. Let me see if I can correct that right now. I think, let's see, which side should it be? I guess this side corresponds to that one. So we'll put a star on that one. All right, so we have omega alpha dagger alpha equals omega star alpha dagger alpha. And these two values are the same to one another. We're multiplying this number by the same value on both sides. So this says that the, the complex conjugate of omega has to be equal to omega. And the only way we can have a number be equal to its complex conjugate is if the imaginary part of it is zero. And if the imaginary part of a number is zero, that means that that number is a real number. So in that case, what we've proven here is that if we have a Hermitian matrix where your uh, adjoint is equal to yourself, a Hermitian matrix, uh, for a Hermitian matrix, all of your eigenvalues have to be real. So this is gonna be important because um, just as in the rest of quantum mechanics where we represent physical properties by operators, we're gonna represent our operators here as matrices so the things, the values that we can measure, so things like energy, position, momentum, the values that we can measure have to be real numbers. 
and the values that we measure are always going to be eigenvalues of these matrices. So thus it makes sense that any value we measure has to be a real number. So all of these eigenvalues we need to be real. So all of the matrices that are going to be representing these operators in computational chemistry are always going to have real eigenvalues because they are Hermitian. Okay, property number two, we can show that the eigenvectors are orthogonal. So just as there are going to be n different eigenvectors, there are going to be n different eigenvalues. All of those are going to be orthogonal as well. All right, so we have O alpha equals omega alpha, definition of an eigenvalue equation. So we're going to take the adjoint of O acting on a different eigenvector beta. So we have beta dagger O dagger equals omega beta star beta dagger. So rho vector there on both sides. So here we're going to left multiply by beta dagger, the rho vector beta on both sides. Once again, we can factor out omega because omega is a constant. All right, and then we're going to right multiply on this side by alpha. So we have beta dagger O alpha equals factoring out the constant omega beta beta dagger alpha. All right, so once again, we have uh, these two values on the left being equal to one another. Uh, I went, went ahead and substituted omega beta here because we've already proven that that has to be a real number. So it's complex conjugate has to equal itself. All right, so these two are equal, so the right sides must be equal as well. So we have omega, omega alpha times beta dagger alpha equals omega beta times beta dagger alpha. So subtracting from both sides, we get omega alpha minus omega beta is equal to beta dagger alpha. So that'll equal zero. All right, so repeating that up here. So what this says is that we either have to have omega alpha and beta alpha are, so if they are, let's see, omega alpha minus be, omega beta. So if these two are equal to one another, then this is zero and we have it satisfied. So that's fine. But in general, our eigenvalues are going to be different. So if our eigenvalues are different, this term is not zero. So that means that this term has to be zero. But notice that this term is equal to the definition of the bracket beta alpha. So that's, e that's basically the overlap of, of vectors beta and alpha. So this means that if omega alpha and omega beta are not equal, so if the eigenvalues are what you would call non-degenerate, not equal, then the overlap of beta and alpha has to be zero. So this means that you have orthogonal eigenvectors because these two were just any randomly chosen eigenvectors. And when the eigenvalues aren't the same, they have to be orthogonal. When, the, when uh, both of these are alpha, then this is going to be equal to 1. They're going to be normalized eigenvectors. So for a, for a given Hermitian matrix, we're going to have n eigenvectors that are going to be orthogonal to another and normalized. So we have an orthonormal set of eigenvectors. Okay, and what did I have down here? Uh, just more demonstration that we had alpha i i. Oh, and <clears throat> all the diagonal elements in Hermitian matrices have to be real because according to our definition, whenever we go to the opposite side of the diagonal, we have to switch the imaginary part and keep the real part the same in order for this to be true whenever we exchange indices and take the complex conjugate. So when we take the complex conjugate on the diagonal, um, it has to give us the same number. So the only way that can be true is if the complex part of the diagonal is always zero. So in a Hermitian matrix, uh, not only do we have these off diagonal elements mirroring each other like that, but our diagonal elements all need to be real numbers as well.